Hello and welcome back to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition resource pack showcase and tutorial video and this pack can do amazing things but before we get into it let's roll the intro. <laughs> required which means this can be used on any world realm or server just by adding it to your global resources and all you need is an armor stand and a banner and you can use any banner you want it can have a pattern on it it can be any color you want it really doesn't matter and all you do is just pose the armor stand and you get a range of different features so if we pose it the first pose we get spawn spheres we got a big green spawn sphere and we get a big red spawn sphere and these are set at 24 blocks and 44 blocks away from the armor stand which is the spawn radius and despawn radius for entities on a simulation distance of four chunks just want to point out that if you've already downloaded the pack you may have the older version i've updated it to 1.0.2 at the time of recording which has the correct size spawn and despawn spheres so make sure you check that out if you haven't already now it would be nice if if I could expand this so that it would work for simulation distances higher than that but unfortunately with entities being entities on Minecraft Bedrock Edition when you go too far away from the armor stand the entire thing unloads and you can't see it anymore and there's nothing I can do about that we've got it on maximum render distance so yeah it's only going to work with the four chunk simulation distance for the outside one for the despawn radius the inside one's the same on all of them anyway so this one's going to be useful for you the next feature of this pack is the chunk borders which if we change its pose again you will get one chunk around the armor stand and it is chunk aligned so we can put these absolutely anywhere put them into that pose and the chunk lines will match up so you can basically build your builds and line them up and get them exactly how you want them to be without you know obscuring your view for the rest of the world and there are two other versions of the chunk board as well if you don't just want one chunk and you want to save on your armor stands if you click it again you will get a three by three chunk grid around the armor stand which is absolutely fantastic and if you click it again you will get a five by five chunk grid around the armor stands again go too far away and the entire thing will disappear from view that's just bedrock edition you get basically 70 blocks that you can travel away from these things and they will go up basically 70 blocks because that's as high as you'll be able to see above them and they will go down to the bottom of the world as well so you'll be able to place one of these at the top of the world and go down 70 blocks before it disappears which is absolutely wonderful i just want to take a second to say that if you are enjoying this video and you like the packs that i've been making for bedrock edition then please do give this video a like so that we can pass it around get more people involved the more people that like it the more people will see it and the more people will have access to these very very handy tools now sadly there are some graphical issues with this pack on android and ios you can see from this video here that i took on my phone and on my ipad that there are some issues and without getting too technical it is the material that's used for the spawn spheres and the trunk borders that has an issue rendering on those devices but fear not i have added a separate download link for mobile versions which uses a slightly different material for rendering on those devices however if you use the mobile version on the windows 10 pc you'll get problems so just to demonstrate i have both types on my pc i have the one that we're running at the moment and i also have the mobile version if i add that instead you'll see that the chunk borders and the spawn spheres still work but their material kind of glitches a little bit well the chunk yeah that's what happens if you use that particular one on pc works great on mobile but on pc it doesn't so we had to have two completely separate packs which means there's actually four completely separate packs because we've got the normal pack which doesn't use their experimental mode and we've got the experimental mode version of the pack as well because that adds a few more features for worlds that you can use experimental mode on Anyway, back to our chunk borders. Before I move on to the next feature, the chunk borders will not work if you put your armor stand on an angle. And the reason for that is basically the maths was too difficult for me to figure out to actually uh, 
yeah rotate it and use triangulation and all that sort of stuff to get it lined up so it'll only work if you've got your armor stand in basically the cardinal directions the next feature on the list is a compass and that will always point north no matter which way round you put your armor stand give it a banner again and just flick it through until you get to the compass and you'll see it will always point in the north direction meaning you will always be able to find your way home beyond the compass we move on to a distance measure which is actually really handy the further you move away from this the higher the number will go and obviously that number is in how many blocks you are away if we get to 70 though and then move back one you will see it disappears again this is to do with the render distance for entities on minecraft bedrock edition but this doesn't just work on a horizontal this also works on height as well so it can work on any any angle so you can figure out exactly how far you are away from your armor stand and it will rotate to face you so it's always easy to read which is absolutely fantastic now i will say that this is not actually the distance to the player this is actually the distance to the camera because that's how bedrock edition works so you'll see at the moment without me moving it says i'm six blocks away stood but if i change to third person camera it will change to 10 because now the camera is in a different position now Next on the list, we have days in game. So days in game is basically how long the world has existed for in terms of Minecraft days. It is 24,000 ticks per day. If you didn't know already, there are 24,000 ticks in a day. And as soon as it gets to midnight, it will advance. So I guess we should probably turn daylight cycle on so we can demonstrate this. So there we go, we come past midnight. We've got day one, the sun is coming up and it's going down again. And we've gone into day two. The moon is going around, we've got the Trudy Bedrock moon on for some reason. And now the sun's going down again. And it gets to midnight and it goes up to day three. So you can see this works perfectly. So now you can measure your game. And for all of those people that are into the 100 days doing this particular thing in Minecraft, you've got a visual representation of that in your world. And you can leave that there for as long as you like. And if you enjoy that, then you'll probably enjoy the next feature as well. So if we click through to get to the next one, we've actually got time in ticks. And this is the time that I mentioned within 24,000 ticks that the game is actually running for. And this is useful for things like villager farms when you're thinking about villagers and their schedules villagers will do things at a certain time of the day and you can now measure that and get it exactly right so you know exactly when your villagers will sleep and when they'll be going to work and all of those sorts of things and it's just you know handy to look at as well it's quite a nice little feature and speaking of features the next one is a frames per second meter it will actually give you your frames per second now it does tick over so fast you can barely read it there's not a lot i can do about that that's actually how quickly the entity is updating within the world but if we went to somewhere that was a little bit laggy let's say chunk town on the truly bedrock smp server you might notice there's a bit of a difference in the frames per second and here we are on the truly bedrock server in real life with the creeper jays and we're in chunk town so let's pop our armor stand down and the random banner i happen to have in my inventory and just check and see what our frames per second is here let's give it that and then uh, flick through there just like that wow we're 33,382 days in game here and there we go frames per second has gone right down 46 if i face towards silent whispers base there and if i face away from it well it goes up to a 60 something so yeah not very many frames per second in this area you might also notice sometimes when you put the armor stand down and you put it on time in ticks the ticks take a while to actually update and come through i believe that is a server side thing i'm not sure if that happens in single player or not i don't think it's a bug i believe it's to do with the entity optimization features they added into bedrock a little while ago so there's not much we can do about it the next one is the coordinates so if you don't have coordinates enabled in your game maybe you're the coordinates are turned off for whatever reason and you want to know where you are in the world you can flick through and it will give you the coordinates of where the armor stand is stood and the thing that's really useful about this is that if you click it again it will give you the corresponding nether coordinates to where the armor stand is stood which is really handy for nether portal syncing so let's say we want to link up a couple of portals perfectly we've got two portals very nearby each other here and we don't want them linking with each other we want to link them to the right ones we can see by putting the armor stand on the portal block itself exactly where we need our portal blocks to be in the nether so what we're going to do is go through one of these and set the portals up on the other 
side. So this one, we need to be at one, four, and minus one. Okay, so now deep in the depths of the nether, you can see I have another armor stand in exactly the right place. And if I put the nether coordinates on, well, it's close enough. It says it's at one, five, and minus one. I could go a block lower, but there's uh, bedrock in the way. So if I put this on here and go through, I should come out through that one there. And there we go. My armor stand must have popped back through again because... Well, it was on the portal block. So now we need one over at two, four, and zero. Okay, so I've cleared a bit of room. We've got both portals right next to each other here. This one has an obsidian block sticking out of it so that I know which one's which. And if I go through this one, I should come out of one that has an obsidian block sticking out of it. If I go th back through there, I should come out of one that has an obsidian block sticking out of it. And if I go back through that one, I should come out the same one. If I go through this one, however, I should come out the one on the other side, which I just did. And if I go through this one, then I should come out the one on the other side. So there you go. Perfect portal linking one block apart from each other and linking perfectly. All thanks to our handy little armor stand fellow. Now there is one more aspect to this pack that will only work if you have experimental mode enabled. And if we go to the game settings and look down at the experiments, it is the holiday creator features mode that you need enabled. So this probably won't work on realms or servers, but it certainly will work on your single player world. And that is the biome detection. So basically you put an armor stand down and set it to biome detection mode and it will tell you which biome it is on the little green ring around it. So if we go into the nether and pop an armor stand down on here and cycle through till we get to the end, like that, you'll see this one says nether. So that means it is not Crimson Forest or Basalt Delta or Warped Forest or Soul Sand Biome. This is just the nether wastes. If we go up and find ourselves a different type of nether biome, for instance, the Warped Forest and do it again, then it says Warped 4 because Forest didn't fit on the green ring. So yeah, there you go. That works absolutely fantastically if you are in experimental mode. And there is one more little caveat that I need to explain about experimental mode. Going back a step to our nether coordinates feature, if we have nether coordinates and normal coordinates enabled in the nether and we're using the experimental version of this pack, then they will show the correct coordinates. The nether one will show where the actual armor stand is within the nether, so you can see that's right. And the overworld one will show the corresponding place in the overworld, so you can see the coordinates there are basically those multiplied by eight. Unfortunately, if we use the non-experimental version of the pack, it doesn't know that it's in the nether, so it can't change this accordingly. So your nether coordinates will be the actual coordinates what we've got here, divided by eight again, if that makes sense. And that probably doesn't make too much sense. So what I'm gonna do is disable the experimental version of the pack and put the non-experimental version of the pack on so you can see exactly what I mean. You'll see that now the one that is the normal coordinates will show the actual nether coordinates and the one that's the nether coordinates will have those divided by eight, which gives us completely incorrect coordinates. And that is only because Without the experimental features, the armor stands don't know that they're in the nether. They don't know because they can't detect what biome they're in without those experimental features. So in the future, when those features come out of experimental mode, this will work perfectly in the pack, in the standard pack. But for now, while we're waiting for that to happen, we're just gonna have to put up with using experimental mode on the worlds that we can and maybe not having the best coordinate system. Just to show you though, that with the normal version of the pack, the coordinate system does work absolutely perfectly without experimental mode so long as you're in the overworld so you can still link up your portals absolutely fine before i go there is one question i'd like to address one i've already had quite a few of and that is can i make one of the poses do light levels unfortunately not that is not something that i have access to via entities so i won't be able to add that to this pack so yeah i'm sorry about that It'd be great if i could and if i could i absolutely would but i can't so yeah, we are stuck with what we got for now. Hopefully in the future, they'll add even more features so I can make this pack even more better. But for now, I think it's absolutely wonderful and pretty magical as it is. So if you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and don't forget to subscribe for more Foxy Notel content. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.